But I think uh, going right back, there were some very early attempts. Um, we still have a, an original copy of the Wagner Lengthner uh, in one of our offices. And uh, this was a monolateral type device where you would just uh, use the thumb screw to actually lengthen the leg. It, it sort of worked. You you got some uh, some form of bone, but the uh, the principles at that point were really just um, plating after you'd got some form of callus, and and the uh, there wasn't really uh, much um, in terms of strength. But they did eventually um, heal through, but not without their complications. But being a monolateral device, um, there were issues with uh, the biomechanics and the callus formation, and so uh, better implants really were needed. It's really uh, this chap, uh, I think, who started, um, and this is uh, Giovanni de Bastiani from Italy, uh, who uh, popularized and uh, was in heavily involved in uh, setting up uh, orthofix and the DAF or dynamic axial fixator. And uh, my, my prof when I was a fellow, uh, Mike Siley, um, was very heavily involved and was actually one of the uh, co-inventors of the Sheffield hybrid fixator, which was actually a uh, half pin uh, fixation system coupled with the tension fine wires. They were quite chunky wires and the tensioning was actually quite uh, significant but we uh, through a lot of my time as a fellow in 2003 um, we were using uh, quite a few of these and using the uh, what would now be the fairly well established of a minimal invasive uh, corticotomy and slow distraction uh, with a uh, callus formation and then stabilization there was a fairly reliable result that could be achieved and quite a number of patients were then uh, used, uh, had this treatment. And there was, during this period, uh, quite a lot of limb lengthening, particularly in achondroplastics and uh, Prof Sider was quite heavily uh, involved in that. This, this has really gone out of vogue now. We've, we do very few pure lengthenings now, actually. And um, the... Um, the, the sort of the treatment aims really now is in more in terms of alignment and uh, tensioning of uh, collateral ligaments, for example, around the knee. But the uh, orthofix equipment was uh, used uh, quite extensively. And I think my personal favourite in my year as a fellow was what I uh, came to nickname the, the Sale Superframe. And this was quite an elaborate and extensive uh, frame that uh, was being used to cor uh, correct uh, patella baja at the time, along with a, a number of other um, problems. However, moving on from there, all these pictures uh, seem to have a very common theme running in them. On the left-hand side with Prof Sharad, uh, Leo Donnan and uh, the, uh, my senior colleague, James Fernandes, really has been sort of the main instrumental driver of uh, a lot of what's been done here at Sheffield in, in recent years. And he's been quite prolific in research and publication. And I've, been, I've considered myself very fortunate having a, such a, um, a, a, a sort of gifted and, and very helpful mentor as well over the years. When I was a junior doctor, um, James was the fellow and when I became the fellow, he was my consultant alongside Prof. Sarley. And we've, in Sheffield, um, done a, quite a number of different types of cases, including osteogenesis and um, using the, the calatasis techniques with all sorts of different frame constructs, which I'm sure Sanjeev will be going through in more detail. But just to give you a, a flavour of the sort of indications that we've actually been involved in. The uh, aid chondroplastics, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're not really lengthening for pure cosmesis now, but we are correcting varus. And we also use a tether tensioning technique uh, where we differentially lengthen and tighten the lateral collateral ligaments, which really does help 
uh, improve the uh, knee joint uh, laxity. Bifocal uh, treatments are often involved and uh, tibial uh, correction uh, in terms of the overall axis and ankle. Post meningitis has been, this has been one of uh, my cases and um, there's a variety of uh, constructs that have been used over time. This young lad is actually another of James's patients. So we've, been, uh, we've had experience in upper limb lengthening post meningitis. He's actually training to be part of the British Paralympic team. Um, I think James seems to accumulate swimmers because this is another of his who's actually in the British Paralympic team. I include this not so much to show limb lengthening, but actually just to highlight, I suppose, that over the years, the use of it fixators and, and the implants that are available has changed. And, and again, my colleague will probably touch on this in due course. But the um, use of uh, guided growth is um, increasingly popular. And um, years ago, this could easily have been four external fixators uh, achieving something similar. So it, things have changed over the years. The, all sorts of uh, Ilazarov and other constructs have been used in terms of the um, methods. And uh, I'm just highlighting a number of these uh, that over the years. In total, I think we've done over uh, almost over 3,000 different frames uh, and constructs and treatments. Uh, and it's, it is a changing landscape, though. We have um, the, the implants and indications for leg lengthening are changing. And uh, the number of actual external frames uh, we are using is reducing, though, in favour of other devices. Um, but we do continue to be quite active in this in terms of the limb lengthening and correction for both congenital and acquired conditions. But it is a team effort and it's not just the surgeons. And uh, we have uh, physios, nurse specialists and uh, the gentleman in the, the blue top in the middle there uh, was actually uh, one of the longest uh, members of our team working right uh, alongside Prof Sali and has been with us for a number of years, uh, Jonathan Pagden. You do need that multidisciplinary input though. So we need the, uh, we have access to psychologists, the nursing care and the nurse specialists and physios. We have uh, ward and pre-assessments prior to surgery. Uh, we have uh, patients' uh, information and counselling packs, and there's quite a wide support, uh, parental support groups as well, so that we can individualise the treatment for uh, these patients. <laughs> 